Hello everyone and thank you for joining us again on this All You Need Is A Ball webinar. Um, this series, the purpose of this series now is to look into the history of freestyle football as a sport, as an art and as a culture. Um, and I'm joined by one of the pioneers and legends of the game, um, still active, can't say legend just yet, um, <laughs> but Mr. Philip Warren Gertson. Welcome, Philip. Well, oh, applause. Thank you very much for having me on the show, Dan. Great to be um, um, here, pleasure, I guess. <laughs> no, so the, um, yeah, so to introduce you, uh, Philip, for everyone watching, um, Philip has been in the game for as long as you'll know, um, certainly along, as long as the professional side of, of freestyle being a, being a sport has existed, um, participating in all of the top world championships um, organised by the Federation, finishing in the top eight of every single one, I believe, um, one. attending Super Bowl every single, oh really, we'll come back to that. Um, <laughs> Super Bowl every single year since its inception. So this man knows the game inside out, um, created lots of moves, king of originality and flow. And yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to have you join and impart your knowledge on the world. Thank you, Philip. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Yeah, so, so again, just to, to sort of talk why, first of all, um, and the, the need I believe is, is there for this because Freestyle is still largely unknown around the world. We've been you know, involved for years and years and years, and there's people back in the 80s that were actually freestyling, as we'll come on to. Um, but still, I mean, I'm from the UK, and we've got very much a culture where they see some freestylers, and it's, oh, you can't do that on the pitch. What's the point? Or, you know, oh, that's just keepy uppy. It's, it's kind of sidelined all the time. And no one really looks deeper. Um, but what amazes me all the time is, yeah, the people like you involved, the culture, the spirit, the the energy that's there. So, so we want to demystify it. We want to talk about the next generations coming through, inspire them. Let's educate, buddy. Let's tell the world what freestyle is really about. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, let's do it. So, uh, so yeah. So to kick things off, let's begin with you, as that's the easy starting point. So, can you tell everyone, please? how it started for you and what you've been through, your, your journey. All right, so uh, my journey actually started in uh, Oslo, Norway. Um, born half Filipino, half Norwegian. And then when I was 10 years old, I moved to uh, Malmö. Oh, I actually moved to Sweden. Um, Malmö is where I live right now. Um, and I've been freestyling for half my life. So that's 14 years uh, right about now. Um, so I actually got started with freestyle because I was extremely bored. I used to live on the countryside in Sweden and I was just extremely bored. I had nothing to do. And when the down period of football was going on, there's only like one or two trainings a week. Um, and I loved football and I just wanted to do more of it. And uh, I just discovered freestyle on random, on like a random social media platform way back in the days. And uh, I just got hooked. I just got stuck. And uh, I kept on training every day since that day. Awesome. Do you remember what, what was the initial hook, though? Was, what was the first trigger apart from being bored? You must have, been, you must have seen something. <laughs> yeah. So um, the first time I ever saw Freestyle was when I was on this, plat uh, this platform. It's a Swedish so social media platform. Basically, what you could do is that you could pay um, like a pound on your phone, like through your um, carrier and send a message that will then de be displayed all over the, the social media platform all over Sweden. So that everyone who's online at that very moment for about 10 seconds will see your message for one pound. So there was this guy called Tom, um, um, a freestyler uh, from Sweden, who sent a message that said, uh, go check out my football freestyle video or like football trick video. Um, click here. And I was like, got nothing better to do. Clicked it. And I saw a guy doing push ups with a ball on his neck and did an around the world uh, to Moonlight Shadow, that classic song. And like at that moment, I was like, I want to know how to do that. I want to learn how to do that. So me and my best friend went out um, in the yard. We tried it out. Like I could juggle a little bit. Like I, was, I wasn't very comfortable with juggling. My friend could juggle pretty well, um, but that's where it all started. And I think that's where I got hooked as well. There was nothing 
like like you know got me even more hooked but at that time i realized that this is much more fun than football <laughs> awesome no i hear that statement a lot and and it's it's not about though being better than or being not or trying to be better than i don't think it's just yeah it just seems like for every single freestyle i've ever met it's it's more more interesting it's more engaging there's more enjoyment there's more touches of the ball you, it's you you can express yourself right yeah because you you don't need more like many people around you to do it but obviously it's more enjoyable if you're more people that you can share this you know the interaction with the ball with other people for sure cool thanks for that right <clears throat> The rest of it, I'm sure the journey will come back to you on the next part. So, so to yep. kick off this series, we're going to look firstly at the history. So let's, let's start with the beginnings or the, yeah, the heritage of the sport and the art that we know today. Um, start with what you know, I guess, because you, you, you spent God knows how many hours on the internet and pulled through your, your knowledge of the culture and the art is phenomenal. So I want to, to capture some of that through this. So, where did it begin in terms of a sport or an art, in your opinion? And, and let's trace those steps back. So there are many, many ways to look at it. There are many different forms of like juggling a round object. Um, so there's many ways to look at it. You can trace it all the way back to like 4,000 years ago in um, ancient Myanmar, where they're kicking around a, a rattan ball, like a wooden ball in a circle and it's called chinlon and that was possibly the first ever like historically proven part of football freestyle but obviously it's a smaller ball and it's not anything like freestyle today like how we compete how we interact with each other how it's performed and stuff like that so i wouldn't say that this is specifically how freestyle started but it is very like interesting to look at that it existed 4,000 years ago and it still exists today. Nothing has changed with it. You know, the tricks have become better, but they're still doing it with a wooden ball barefoot on like sand. So that's pretty cool. You can also trace it back to the beginning of the last century where there was jugglers uh, that was doing like rolling uh, like a smaller ball on their head, doing around the world doing a little bit of a kick-ups, um, doing neck flicks, having the ball in the neck and flicking it up. Um, but I do think the inception of football freestyle linked to football um, came when Maradona was, you know, the greatest player, one of the greatest players on earth, when he was doing that famous warm-up with Life is Life. You know the, yeah. you know, the warm-up video, right? Yeah, Where it's just kicking about like six minutes of him just having fun with the ball. Um, I think it was a, like a warm uh, warm up for the World Cup game or something like that. And he's doing around the world. He's, you know, delaying it on his foot, doing stuff like that. But even then, there wasn't anything that was proven to become a sport, right? So even later, I think in 2001, Nike launched a, a, um, a, uh, an online competition, like a show your skill type of deal, which Steve Elias won. Um, and I think that was the first part of freestyle as we know it today and that we like the current generation in freestyle can relate to because it's the purest form of freestyle, um, related to what we're doing right now, because we're not kicking a wooden ball around. We're not like juggling the smaller ball. We're actually doing it with a football, but we are not football players. So I think 2001, around that time, um, was, you know, when freestyle as a sport, more than just a uh, pastime hobby, was introduced. Because obviously there are freestylers that still, you know, perform right now that have been freestyling since the 80s. The only yeah. difference is that they're not doing it in a competitive level. And it's not the way we look at, like, the way we look at it right now. Love it. And so that was, and by the way, everyone watching, we're going to post links to all of these names and, and um, examples in the, in the description below so we can, so you can reference them. 
Um, but yeah, so, so they, the early 2000s, definitely, I remember it really well. I, I was at university at the time, and I can remember the Joga Bonita commercials and the around the world video that we you know passing the ball from frame to frame that was that was done with Ronaldinho involved and, and many other famous players. And um, there was one or two freestylers back then that we still know of now that, that got involved in that. So that was super iconic. Cage football was part of it as yeah. well. But yeah, the, the tricks definitely defined a different way of playing with the ball, right? Um, right, slight slight <clears throat> interlude. Let's just pause for a moment before we go after that. Um, you because you mentioned it a couple of times, and this this argument always comes up: is it freestyle football or is it football freestyle to you? <laughs> I, I I don't actually care. Likewise, good. <laughs> um, but I would say football freestyle. Okay, it doesn't mean anything different to you then. Not really. As long as as long as you don't say soccer freestyle, I'm good. Fine. Good. We're <laughs> going to leave it at that. Officially, from now on, we don't care. You call it what you want. <laughs> yeah. As long as the word football and freestyle in some way. Uh, yeah, great. <laughs> okay. Um, let's look a little bit nearer to, to now then. So, so post-2001, I can remember then, um, well, my first real interaction came in 2006 when I met Abbas Farid, who in 2003 won the Nike competition that was in the UK at that time. So that's when I started meeting him and, and JK in South Korea and Tale. Um, yeah, what were the key moments then for you since so after the Nike campaign finished? Because then they cut their funding and they didn't do any more ever, I don't think. I don't think they've done anything since. Um, mm -hmm. What else, what, what were the changing points then in the way people freestyle? So in 2006 was when I started. So uh, Jan February, I think, 2006 was when I started and I was introduced to it, you know, as I said, with a video, but I used Google, I checked it out and apparently I found like a lot of forums online. Um, you know, in 2006, every niche had a forum for it. So like you could, you know, just talk to other people from all over the world about stuff you're interested in. And there were a few key forums back in 2006 that were very popular. And these platforms were perfect for like new freestylers to show off their skill, but also for older freestylers to do like, um, to push the limit of freestyle. Because in 2006, we were like, many tricks have not been invented yet. Like a lot of the tricks that are big now were just being invented at that time. So these forums were, was a perfect platform to just show off your skills and talk. And I think having forums at that time was probably one of the best thing that could happen to the community in 2006. Um, as you said, Nike pulled their funding from the, from the freestyle competitions, but that didn't stop the forums to have internal competitions. Um, I remember there was expert football competition. There was, uh, beyond football competition, there was um, a NAS competition, uh, which I won in 2006, which was which was cool. It was uh, organized by the No Added Sugar team, um, which is like very old school um, cure, um, fun fact for you guys. But yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I don't think there was much like corporate involvement in 2006 um, when I got started. But I do remember that Red Bull got involved in 2007 in Red Bull Reaction in South America, uh, which was the first, I think, battle concept, the 1v1, three minutes, uh, two players, one ball type of concept that we still do today. Um, Right. So that, I, that was the first test of, of that, wasn't it? And, and our good friend, uh, give a little credit to Mr. Hayes. Um, yeah. Hayes, who's, who's back at Red Bull now, he, um, he created that on behalf of Red Bull as, as a format, wasn't it, of a, of a new style of event. Um, and unbeknown to them, really, I guess, about the culture at that point, it was just, let's create a new event, right? It was for them another platform for, for the brand initially. And then uh, it went so well that they carried on and it evolved into what we know now as um, Red Bull Street Star. Yeah, because there was competitions even before uh, Red Bull got involved, but everything was just 
um, you got two minutes on stage. We'll rank you from one to 16. And then you'll just, you know, top four goes through to the next round and you get three minutes on stage this time. And then we'll just, yeah. you know, judge the overall performance. And it was, it was fine, I guess. But I think Red Bull really added the, that kind of uh, evolution to what the freestyle sport could become. Um, so that was that was true of, of so we're talking about masters of the game, which we haven't really said about yet, and Euroback. Um, they all had that same format, did they back then? That was the yes, they did. And, right. and we had a competition in Sweden in two thousand and eight, as well, stadium competition. Mm -hmm. uh, and then and then we had a um, competition in Pujitsu in two thousand and nine, which was a mix of both, which was pretty cool as well, uh, where you started off with a two minute routine. And then you got ranked and then you do one battle and then you move on to the final four and then you do a three minute routine again. Cool. Okay. So, but I, I guess this is a lot very technical and very like in depth on how the competitions looked like yeah. um, mm -hmm. back in the days. But I think the most important thing is how the community looked like back in the day. Like between 2006 and 2010, it was all about like getting to know new people through freestyle, um, spreading the knowledge and the experiences that you have through freestyle. And I remember in, in my little town in Gantofta, we were about five freestylers, which is like, I don't like 1% of the population or some were freestylers at that time. So um, that was pretty cool. But I guess, um, you know, people grow up, people grow tired of it, but we still managed to have like a big community here in Sweden, especially because we had so many profiles, like big profile names here in Sweden, one of which you already named Pale, uh, which he is the godfather of freestyle. Um, but at, at those times, you know, all we had was to look up to those profiles to those people, those um, idols, uh, Tuzani, Ratinho, um, Timo, Pale, all of these people. And they have been a cornerstone of the development of freestyle and what it is today. Amazing. Yeah, and once again, we're going to have to post, there's going to be loads of links under this video because <laughs> there's too many, there's too many names as well that we haven't even mentioned, but, you know, left, left on the technical side maybe, but yeah. And Mr. Wu, um, to, yeah. to John, John Farnworth. John, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're going to definitely name a load more of them under here because I think that's really important that people know, yeah, the, the pioneers, the people that took a risk and, and they went out there and they've, they've achieved some incredible things just with them and the ball. And that's ultimately yeah. what's, what's amazing. Here. Cool. Um, and then just to finish this sort of section for now and touch upon the more recent years. So so obviously we've got up to 2010 now, um, 2011 was where I properly came involved and, and got together with Lucaso and Steve and, and the team and created the World Federation. Um, so then there was a bit more of a governing body feel, uh, but the, the challenge for us I know was how do you do that but not lose that street culture vibe, you know, the community element. The last thing you want to do is come in and create rules and yeah, rules, structure, don't do this, don't do that. This is about yeah. complete self-expression. So so we kicked off with an event in Kuala Lumpur, um, which was an amazing experience for everyone. I think it still goes, certainly for me, it was the best one we've ever done, I think. <laughs> don't know I, uh, I'm i inclined <laughs> to agree, yeah. It's... <laughs> um, Started yeah, so at a high. Introduction of a, exactly, yeah. Um, but yeah, there was the concept was a, a ranking system, a bit of organisation to support them some brands to get involved more regularly and more structured to the event system around the world. Um, so yeah, and, and it's been, and it continues to this day and we're evolving and, and adapting everything as, as we speak, I guess, actually. So um, any other points in the, the last 10 years or so? 10, ten years? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of time, but I think the, the thing that's changed the most is the uh, significance of social media and the, Actually, the lack of like human contact or interaction through freestyle has actually gone down because of social media. I don't know. Well, I don't know if it's because of social media, but I it could be because social media is there and 
you're not willing to travel across the country to meet a guy that you can just send a clip to, you know? Yeah. Um, but I do remember that like fondly in the years 2009 to 2012, maybe 13, we had huge freestyle meetups in Sweden. People came from all over Europe to just train with us for like four days. We stayed in a sweaty gym um, and just trained every single day and uh, just had pizza every day. And it was healthy life. You know, healthy life. Exactly. And, and <laughs> looking back at it, for me, that is what freestyle is. It's not, for me, it's not just the competitions or being famous in social media. It is those moments, those four days yeah. with 25 sweaty people in a crammed up gym and just a lot of pizza, um, just having fun, but you're still pushing limits. You're pushing limits of what's possible to do with the ball. And I think that, you know, those times is the times that, that I cherish the most and I miss the most because it's not happening as often anymore. And due to what's going on right now, it's not happening at all. Um, sure. But I think this is the one of the elements that we need to bring back in 2020 or 2021. Um, <laughs> and the thing with uh, 25 people in a crammed up gym, maybe not, but the meetings, the human interaction, um, I think it's a very important part of freestyle and I think it needs to be encouraged more. A bit, yeah. Um, so there's just two more parts that I want to um, reflect on for this small section and then we're going to to put an end to this first session and, and come on to many other topics in an, another time. Um, two, two elements, kind of to counteract what you just said um, is one of them, because I, I'd say the social media is one of the beauties of the sport also, the fact that we can be everywhere at any time. Um, but let me come back to that. Um, but the other bit that really grabbed me from the start was um, the male-female divide. Not, yeah, divide. The fact is, anyone can do this sport. And that's something that I noticed from, from day one was there's no limitations. Like you said a few times already, there's, there's complete expression of the ball. So you can do what you want. And that's allowed the girls to really flourish as well. And, and alongside most of the names, or all the names I think we've mentioned so far have been, been on the male side. But this is very much a sport for everyone. And they can, male and females can compete against one another. Um, which I believe a few have done to pretty high level as well now. Um, I think so yeah. I think Kitty reached the final of the Hungarian champs one year, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I actually did that. So then uh, Indy as well got to the the last sixteen, definitely, if not the last eight of the North Americans one year. Um, Laura Kate? Biondo was the first. Laura Biondo was the first girl to compete in a in a in Rebel Street style, I believe, back in the day. Um, Kate, yeah, she's been up against a few. So yeah, it's, it's amazing to see. So it's um, open to everyone. And the final point, as I mentioned, from on social, interesting fact for you. I bet you didn't know this one. So the first ever um, website that I set up for F3 back in the day, it was F3.net. I don't know if you were, were on there, but it was before social media was really popular anyway. Um, the first ever member that joined as a wannabe member association was Vanuatu in the Pacific Islands. And they still did, we still don't know anything about the country in terms of, well, there, there, were, there were 300 freestylers meeting every weekend to do competitions. And I, I traveled over there once when I was uh, down in, in New Zealand. I went, oh, 300 kids were getting together every weekend. Nothing's been published outside of the country, but it went, you know, not high level, but they were having a jam and having some sessions on a stage not following any other rule books but but themselves just just having fun which was pretty cool that is awesome I mean, we to. about it if it yeah if it wasn't for the social media stuff we wouldn't know about places like that and, and other countries as well that have got cultures within freestyle yeah obviously uh like i'm not you know talking down on social media because <laughs> i think social media in in general should be just one topic where, which i can ramble on forever about because there are many uh, upsides and downsides <laughs> to that, but that that's definitely awesome. Vanuatu, I know that they're good in in uh, beach football. Yeah, they're pretty good at that. Good beaches, good volcanic beaches there. Yeah. 
Awesome. Well, I think that's enough for now. I think that's hopefully enlightened a few people as to some of the, the roots of freestyle. And um, yeah, join us on the next session where we'll be uncovering more about the culture of freestyle. Thanks, Philip. Awesome. Thanks. See you soon. See you.